It's not broken. Why fix it? How many times have you heard this? Islam just needs a reform. Well, why does it need a reform? Well, then it would be nicer without that jihad business. So let's just reform it. Here's the bad news. I'll start off with it. It is impossible to reform Islam. What do you mean you can't reform it? I want to demonstrate that to you. It's almost like a mathematical business. But you say, look, Christianity and Judaism are reformed, therefore Islam can be reformed. Well, not really. Let's say that you're going to reform Islam by picking out the good and dropping what is bad, and you're the one deciding what is good and bad. Well, this Islam you're going to pick and choose from, what is it? It's Quran, Sirah, and Hadith. So therefore, if you're going to reform Islam, you have to reform the Quran, the Sirah, or the Hadith. Let's start with the Quran. What does it say about itself? Quran 3, 7. No one knows the true interpretation except Allah. That's the interpretation of the Quran. But those firm in knowledge say, we believe in it. All of it is from our Lord. So since every verse comes from Allah, who are you to pick and choose amongst it? Here's an example that you don't even know how to pick and choose anyway. Quran 2, 2, 16. Fighting is prescribed for you and you dislike it. But it is possible that you dislike a thing which is good for you and that you love a thing which is bad for you. So therefore, you, the person picking and choosing, Allah says you don't know how to pick and choose anyway. Quran 11, verse 1. This is a book whose verses are perfect. So every verse is perfect. How, who are you to say they're not? Quran 5, verse 3. This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as religion. Its religion is perfect. That includes Quran and Sunnah. What are you going to do about that? How do you reform perfection? Look, Islam is perfect in its entirety and each individual part. Every verse, every sentence, every hadith is perfect. Muhammad is the perfect model for a human life. There's 91 verses in the Quran which say so. So therefore his Sunnah is perfection. There's not good sunnah and bad sunnah. It's all Allah's perfection. But let's say you're so brilliant that you're smarter than Allah and you're smarter than Muhammad and you come up with this brilliant plan for reformation. So what? Who do you go to? There's no authoritative body to approve or disprove. There is no central body that can issue changes in Islam. So your brilliant reformation plan doesn't have anywhere to go. No one cares. Now look. You say, we need to reform Islam because it will make Islam, whatever we mean by this, nice. Why are you trying to fix what is not broken? Islam is overwhelmingly successful in Europe, Brazil, Central America, United States, and Canada. They don't need to fix anything. It's working like a fine Swiss watch. Look, you ever notice something about these reformer people? They're apologists for Islam, or they're a member of an insignificant group of Muslims. They just simply don't count. So let's go over it again. Quran is perfect. Sirah is perfect. Hadith is perfect. You can't reform them. The doctrine is systemic. It's not just a little bitty tweak here or there. There's no body of authority that can approve any changes you make. And then it's not broken. Why fix it? So these are the reasons that Islam cannot be reformed. I don't care how nice the person is who says it can be. Islam is perfect in its entirety and each individual part. Every verse, every sentence, every hadith is perfect.